One of the critical things that the Brett Kavanaugh hearings drove home was the increasing awareness that effectively in our time we're experiencing a highly differentiated political ontology. And by that I mean people are looking at identical events and their perception of these events at times is so vastly different that you might as well say they're living in different dimensions. The reason why the Kavanaugh hearing was so critical in this matter was because it really brought out these differences. It really showed that there are people occupying different spaces in the same reality. It's not that this is new. This has been ongoing for quite some time. What is critical here, again, is that the Kavanaugh hearing really drove that point home. It became blatantly, glaringly clear to virtually anybody who was watching it that the political divisions in the United States specifically are so great that nobody has a foothold in the same reality anymore. And of course, there's a multitude of reasons for why this is the case. The internet, of course, is the great divider. We all establish our hold in the internet to some degree, and we tend to hang out and spend time in circles, whether that's actively or passively, that suit our political agenda, our needs, our desires, and essentially our comfort zone. This obviously has a spillover effect in reality, and I think ultimately that's what we're witnessing. So when I talk about a new political ontology, I'm essentially talking about an ontology that is ultimately derivative of divisions within the internet, cyber divisions, if you will. In real life, it's much more difficult to distinguish these things until you get events like the Kavanaugh here, until you get events discussing Trump or what have you. Then you really see these divisions. And of course, this isn't anything new, as I've stated just prior. But what is new is that it's so obvious to everyone right now. So what does this mean long term? I think increasingly, and I've made some allusions to this in the past, the United States in particular is growing more and more divided in terms of ideology. Some people say it's racial or ethnic. Maybe that's an element to it, but I think it's mostly political and mostly ideological. Already you have these divisions that have been longstanding, you know, the so-called coastal elites and the flyover states and what have you. But because there's so much spillover, it might be the case that at this stage, a soft partitioning of the United States is inevitable, which is to say people will want to gravitate to those who think most like them. That's usually how things work. Despite what some people claim race and ethnicity are not the primary driving factors behind a sense of cohesion, it really is culture ultimately, although there is oftentimes a relationship between those two. But in the United States in particular, culture and ideology, or cultural ideology, these things seem to be the mainstay of division in the country. Now, I don't know how this is going to play out ultimately, but I don't think it's going to be a hard partition. I don't think people are going to say, we're going to have the south of the United States and the northeast of the United States, and you will be autonomous nations unto yourselves. That will never happen. I don't think the government, frankly speaking, will allow that to happen, even if it might be a good idea, ultimately. And it's not so much that people of differentiated beliefs are looking for safe spaces. It's just that, again, their ontology, the way they perceive reality, and I'm not using ontology in the classic way here, is just so deviant when observing the same events and observing the same world that there's no reconciliation possible. This is where you see the breakdown of dialogue and what happens when dialogue fails. You tend to get conflict. It doesn't always have to be armed conflict, but oftentimes that's what it is. Really, at the end of the day, human beings have this fundamental choice between conversation or conflict, and that's it. You can have conflict within conversation, but it can also go beyond that. And I don't necessarily see this as a terrible thing per se. The real issue with a soft breakup of the United States or a soft partitioning due to these political, ideological, ontological differences is that I don't think people are willing to let it happen. I don't think in particular people on the left would allow people on the right to break away and found their own colonies, as it were, or at least create their own areas where they want to converge and have social relations with each other. That's really the issue when I look at this. I don't think the left is in a live and let live 
situation. I'm much more convinced by the right in this instance, though I'm neither left nor right, that they would be willing to say, hey, just go do your own thing. Now, of course, there are some critical issues here that go beyond this. The fact that universities throughout the United States are dominated by far-left ideologies, and that is problematic. I don't know if it would be reasonable to leave that battleground solely to the left because they've won that war and they won it a long time ago, but they can always gain new ground, and I think resistance has its value. But in the mainstay, I think that is the critical issue, that people on the right are not allowed to, well, basically go their own way, politically or ideologically speaking. The problem, of course, with polarized right-left politics is that even as much as some people on the right would like to do that, there's always that Manichaean clash, this sort of good versus evil. The right typically views the left as quote-unquote evil, and the left typically views the right as quote-unquote evil. That's not my view of things for a number of reasons. I think people, whatever their ideologies think, at least, that they're doing good or think they're pushing things in the right direction, they certainly don't view themselves as evil, uh, and these terms aren't particularly useful when it comes to politics in general. But I think, at the very least, there needs to be a concession that things are this far gone, that people can look at one politician or a series of events surrounding a politician, or really any event, that has any cultural or political implication, and then draw the conclusion that this is X, and somebody else says, no, it's Y, and then somebody else says it's G. You see what I'm getting at here. Things are that far gone. At the moment, it seems that the biggest division is between these so-called coastal elites, the people living on the West and East Coast, particularly the Northeast, and people in the South, the flyover states and what have you. That's a very broad way of putting things, but I think it fits. People on the Northeast Coast, people on the West Coast tend to have left-leaning views, whereas people in the middle of the country and elsewhere tend not to, as a rule, although there are obvious exceptions. A place like uh, Colorado, Boulder, Colorado, is quite left, for example, university town. And the same would be true of Austin, Texas, very, very left in a right-wing state, generally speaking. But as with any of these issues that I talk about or people on the internet talk about, I don't see any mainstream coverage of this. At best, you'll get people who call themselves members of the quote-unquote intellectual dark web talking about this stuff. It's not a very inflammatory topic. It doesn't get people's hackles raised. It is an issue that I think is approachable and therefore should be talked about in the mainstream, unlike population differences or sex differences or the more recent topic I broached in my video, And the Means Shall Divide Us, which I think might be one of, if not the most critical issue of our time. This broad differentiation between people, essentially, who are gifted and not gifted. But this should be simple, you would think. We have these huge political differences, and people are identifying objects and reality in a completely different way. And even attempts on the internet to cross this divide seem to fail. One guy that I admire on some level, who talks about this, with progressives and people on the far left as the distributist. It's really under those circumstances where it becomes absolutely apparent to anyone listening that people are occupying different footholds in reality. One person is all the way out there on the left, the other person is all the way out there on the right, and they're talking past each other and nothing is achieved. I see this task as essentially uh, Sisyphean, pushing the boulder up the hill or the mountain and it just rolling back down. And ultimately, the best solution might be the soft partitioning. Ultimately, the best solution might be for people to just go and do their own thing, if it is permitted, and that's the big if. Again, the mainstream politicians probably wouldn't let it happen, and I think the left less than the right would not want it to happen. There is too much skin in the game, as it were, and it never seems to be enough for the left, even though, of course, they seem to be the dominant force in politics, and despite that, they want to push it ever further. I don't think this is going to end well for anybody. Anyway, these are more observations than anything else. I'm not a sage, I'm not a prognosticator, but I do think these are what the trends are, and it's a strange time we're living in when people can look at identical objects and identical events and receive a completely different picture from observing them. More to come, hopefully, if I'm still alive in the future. Enjoy the rest of your week and the forthcoming weekend. Bye-bye. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.